we're going to do some experiments with magnets. Most of you, I think, know of magnets as almost toys, things that you might use as covered latches, things that don't really impress very much with the force that they can exert. But we have here a magnet which is not strong as magnets go, and we're going to see whether a member of the audience possesses sufficient strength to defeat this magnet in a contest. Can I have a volunteer from the audience, please? Oh, thank you very much. Come in close. What's your name? Carmen. You're Carmen. Right, well, I'm going to show you what I want you to do, Carmen. This is a steel rod. Yes. There we see the two poles of the magnets. How many magnets? Only one, actually. I shouldn't have said magnets. It's two poles per magnet, isn't it? And we know that either pole will attract a piece of steel. Now, if both poles attract the piece of steel with equal force, then we should, I guess, be able to hold it in the centre there and even move it down and out like that with the two poles balancing out. But one would have to be strong, steady, and keep one's mind on the job. Can you do that, Carmen? I'll give it a try. All right, that's the spirit. Now, I'll tell you what you want to do. Take a strong grip, both hands, Good. just move around the front here and see if you can do what I did, pass the steel rod down there and out at the bottom. We'll see how strong you are. Oh dear me, she's fallen at the first hurdle. Well, <clears throat> what's the trouble? It's stuck, is it? Well, I'll help you get it off now. In the middle, you see? In the middle. Very steady. Oh dear. All right, one more try. In the middle. Oh. Well, I'm afraid that was uh, not very successful, was it? Now, you saw me do it. Of course, I had the power off, didn't I? Yes. Yes, I'd be very silly not to. What's the point of this demonstration? Simply that magnets, even relatively weak ones, can in fact exert noticeably strong forces. And when you think about it, every electric motor in the world runs and does its work because of magnetic force. Naturally, if you want to know more about this, you ask your teachers. Here we have a different kind of magnet. I'm going to point out some of its features. We start with a bundle of straight iron wires. The trick is to keep them straight. They go from here right down to the base of this whole thing. We encase them in fiberglass to keep the whole thing tidy. And around the outside here, we wound quite a number of turns of copper wire. And we then have the temerity to connect this via a switch to the AC mains. Now, what sort of magnet is this? And what's it going to do? Well, if we could look at a diagram now, we can see in more detail just what the construction is. You see there the fiberglass sheet, the state iron wires, and the hundreds of turns of copper wire. I don't recommend that you make a magnet like this for yourselves. It could get to be quite dangerous. When the power is applied, a magnetic field pattern is generated. And this particular pattern results from the flow of current back and forth around the coil of wire there. So the north pole and the south pole must interchange every time the direction of the current reverses. And this happens every hundredth of a second. So this is a rather unusual magnet in that it runs on alternating current rather than direct current. Now let's see what we can do with this magnet. Remember, it's reversing polarity every hundredth of a second, so that means the magnetic field must be reversing as well. Here I have what I claim to be a bundle of copper wire connected at the ends to an ordinary car type globe. 
but perhaps you won't take my word for it. Carmen, will you look at this for us? Any hidden batteries? No. Just what I said it was? Yes. Good girl. Well, we turn on the magnet. We lower the coil into the magnetic field. What happens, Carmen? The light globe's glowing. Yes, but how's the electrical energy getting into this coil of wire to make the globe glow? Perhaps it's got something to do with the rapidly changing magnetic field. If you want to know more, of course, you ask your teachers. Now, Carmen, <coughs> we said when we started this segment that magnets attract iron. What do you think that is? It looks like aluminium. You're right, it's a piece of aluminium tube, quite hollow. Now, Carmen, I want you to drop this on to the magnet. Just drop it on over there and see what happens. Good heavens, it doesn't want to fall down, does it? Must be held up by something. Magnetic force, perhaps. Would you like to push that down Hang on with your thumb and forefinger and push it right down to the bottom and hold it there for us. Why did you let go? It's getting hot. She's right, you know, it is getting hot. So there's another peculiar effect of this rapidly changing magnetic field. But you notice that when the power's off and there's no magnetic field, there's no upward magnetic force. What will happen, I wonder, if we turn the power on very suddenly? Let's try it. Here we go. Want to see that again? You see, it's as though there's an invisible spring there, and if we compress it all the way and let go, you just saw what happened. Power off. Power on. And there we are. A remarkable magnet indeed. Remember to ask your teachers about it. Finally, I'd like to thank Carmen for being our very willing and very attractive assistant. Thank you, Carmen.